Hi there, I'm Jenny. I'm an artist and an illustrator, um, but I'm also the founder of Wildlife Drawing, which if you're not already familiar with, it's a life drawing class where we swap out the naked life model and we replace it with animals and plants. So today's tutorial is going to take you through the basics of drawing a flower. So I'm just going to be using one of these uh, normal graphite pencils, but you're very welcome to draw along in whatever material you like to draw with. So all you're going to need is um, something to draw with, um, a piece of paper, and I've got a rubber and a sharpener here just for good measure, and a flower. Um, so if you can't find a flower around the house or in the supermarket, a picture of a flower will do absolutely fine. And really, the two things that you need most of is confidence and enthusiasm. So I promise this tutorial is for all ages, all abilities, and especially for those people who claim that they can only draw stick men. I believe that everyone is creative and everyone draws in their own unique way. Also drawing is such a calming and mindful activity. It's a really good way to forget your worries for a little while. So give it a go. I hope that you have a good time and you might be surprised with the results at the end. So today I'm going to be drawing this beautiful clematis flower, which actually I managed to grow myself on my balcony. Um, my mum will be so proud. Um, so what I do first is I isolate this flower um, on a white background or uh, in a separate vase. It just allows me a little bit of space to properly observe my subject matter. But before you begin drawing the flower for real, sometimes what I do is um, a couple of warm-up exercises. Um, so I do three 30-second quick-fire drawings, and the first 30 seconds I do a blind drawing, so I look only at the flower and not at my paper. The second drawing exercise, I swap my pencil over to my opposite hand that I use to write or draw with, which is usually quite humorous. And the third drawing exercise I do, for 30 seconds, I do a continuous line. And for that one, you can look at the flower and you can look at your paper. You just can't take your pencil off the paper. And those three drawing exercises are really good for firing up the hand-eye coordination before you begin. So what I'm going to do to begin is take a really good long look at my flower and really try and familiarise myself with all of the uh, structure and the shapes and everything about the flower. They're often much more uh, complex than you think they're going to be, so it's a good idea to take the first moment just to observe. And for me it makes perfect sense to start here. Um, at the very middle of the flower as everything else, all the petals kind of expand out from there. And what I'm going to do to begin with is just kind of plan out all of the shapes that I'm going to need, um, but in very faint lines. So if we just start here with a sort of very light circle and one inside um, just to get that central section. And then what I'm going to do is start to just extend out where the petals are going to be. And they've got this sort of helpful line here down the middle. So that's quite good for me to um, be able to just see where they're all coming from. So a really good tip when you're drawing anything that's coming out from a sort of central section here is to use what I call the the clock face method and so that is a method where you just turn the sort of central section into a clock face and then you just look at what time these petals are coming out and by translating it into a clock it just means that your angles are so much more accurate and it's really helpful do is just start to map out the shapes of those petals again just super quick not spending very much time on this I just basically want to make sure that my proportions are all correct 
and I'm keeping my lines nice and faint because then I can rub them out easier. So when you're drawing petals in particular, I mean these are quite unusually shaped petals I would say, but it's a really good idea to just trust your eyes because um, I mean, you and I know that sort of that is the sort of standard shape of the petal, but some of these are twisted and turned and I can see the top of the petal and the bottom at the same time. So what I would suggest you do is just trust your eyes and draw that exact shape. Uh, even though it might not look like a petal to begin with, your shading and everything will, will help support that. But just trust your eyes, draw the shape you can see, however weird it looks. Another tip I have is to when you're deciding what to draw first, I almost draw a line, an imaginary line from my eye to the subject matter. And whatever my pencil hits first, I draw first. So say this petal here that's underneath, I would draw this one first, just because it's so much easier to um, put the background in after you've put the foreground in. And yep, just keeping my lines nice and light. Also, when you're when you're sketching this, um, these this you keep an eye on your proportions. So this side is about the same size as that side. So I want to make sure again in my drawing that that is correct. can't see much of this one here. Okay. And this little last one that's hiding behind. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is cross check my proportions and make sure I'm happy and then I'm going to go in with a bit more shading and tone. So what I'm doing now is I am just going over my initial sketchy lines and just being a little bit more confident and pressing on a little bit harder with the pencil, just making sure everything's in the right place and any lines that you're not happy with, you can just rub them right out. Again, always following those weird crinkly edges of the petal, however strange they look.
Okay, so now you can see I've taken out some of my sketch lines, I've firmed up all of the outlines of the petals, I've cross-checked my proportions, and now what we're gonna do is have a look at some shading. And so in order to make your flower look quite three-dimensional, shading is really key. And before I start to do it, I kind of identify where my light source is. And so I've got a big window coming from this way, but my flat is quite light and so what I'm going to do is just understand that um, the darkest part of the flower is going to be kind of here and underneath here and a shadow is being cast this way um, so good idea to just identify your light source before you begin and the way I begin shading is um, to always use my pencil in the same direction as the sort of structure of the flower because if I started going this way it would look a little bit odd and it wouldn't sort of flow correctly and so what I'm doing is yeah just following that structure where those veins are on the petals um, and that should give me not just tone but also shape at the same time and you want to just keep it sort of quite light at the moment you can always add more but it's harder to take away so just keep that in mind as you begin to build up So something to help me along when I am shading is I often do a little tonal scale. So on the side of my paper, I go from the very darkest that the pencil is capable of, pressing down really hard, and then slightly less, so a really nice dark grey, slightly less mid-tones now, and lighter mid-tones, and then barely there, and then the white of the paper. Um, so if you use all of these tones within your drawing, I think it really shows confidence and it adds a real sense of drama. So I would recommend, um, yeah, making sure you use all of these tones in your drawing um, and that will make people want to look at it. <laughs> So I'm just going to spend some time working into this, working into the shading now. It'll take a little bit of time, but be patient. It's worth it. A couple of other tips as we're going along is um, I'm keeping my pencil incredibly sharp, so sharpening it every minute or so, just to get a lovely definite line around the edges of the petals. Because it's so crinkly and they've got lots of kind of indentations, it's a really good idea to keep that pencil so lovely and sharp. You get that crisp edge and it compares really beautifully to this sort of softer shading. A good point with the shading as well is that you're looking for a, a sort of smooth gradient from the very dark to the very light. So you're looking for that lovely kind of flow, a gradual gradient. So we're about halfway through now um, and I'm having quite a nice relaxing time, I have to tell you. Um, something I was going to point out is that um, when you're shading, if you're shading something that is quite dark and in the background, it will automatically make whatever is lighter and in the foreground pop out. So you see how I'm going to add quite a bit of darker shading on this petal that's sort of hiding behind these two other petals. So it's quite, it gets quite complicated in that bit there. 
but this area is where it's incredibly dark there's almost no light hitting it at all and can you see now how dark that is and how much that petal is kind of popping out from the page that's a really really good trick to get a real sense of three-dimensionality again using my very sharp pencil for the um, real like tips and taking out any lines that you're not keen on What I found really helpful is that structure of the flower. So I can see here the veins are all coming down across the petal to the very tip. And so I've started to kind of, you know, mimic that with my lines. And that I feel like is giving the flower a real sense of shape. We're on the very last petal now, so I'll just kind of pop the camera on so you can see how I'm doing it. So just following that line of the petal edge really closely, every little wibble, every little strange shape. And, yep, continuing again with that shading. So here the petal almost kind of folds over back on itself. So you can do that by just showing, you know, those two lines there. And then again, shading underneath so that lighter part pops out. And yet following those veins and sometimes back from the petal edges at the same time just to show that shape. Hope you're all getting on well with your drawings. Okay. We are not far off done now. Okay, so you'll notice that I have left the middle section and this is quite fuzzy and textured and the reason for that is I'm just going to tell you a little note on the texture and so this is made up of lots and lots of sort of fine kind of I don't really know what they're called, sort of like frizzy little tendrils. And so what I'm going to do is again, sharpen my pencil so it's the sharpest it can almost possibly be. And then again, just kind of showing shape at the same time as texture by just sort of folding those lines back into the middle there. Just so we can get a lovely sense of that texture. And then this sort of frizzy bit here, what I'm going to do is just kind of give it a few a few lines to show that it's a different section but the mind is clever and you don't actually have to draw every single one of these lines or every single one of these veins in order um, to to complete your drawing often the um, the best way to do it is just kind of give a few lines to allude to the fact that that's a very textured area and then you won't really need to do that much more to it the brain sort of fills it in for you when people are looking at your drawing um, so a bit more texture in there and a little bit of shading to show that this is a sort of circular circular shape possibly just a little bit more definition on the edges it's a good idea to just have a little once over make sure you're happy with everything but also don't go too far it's sad when drawings will get a little bit um, overworked and so do keep stepping back and just making sure that you're still happy with everything there's still areas of white um, but there's also areas of really good shading and the last thing you might want to do is 
just add a bit of shadow. So as I was saying, that window is bringing in the light this way, so I can see some shadows of the petals there. And it's a good idea to always draw some sort of shadow in, just to make sure that your item, your subject matter, um, is it's got weight, it's got gravity, is it, and also is, is a three-dimensional object. And so um, what I'm going to do is um, just take a look at the shapes of the shadows. Use my pencil on the side. Oh, my dog's just come in. <laughs> Hi, Emil. And just loosely get the shape of those shadows. And... bit one here. So it's just, can you see they're just uh, similar to the shape of that petal there. And one for this one, although it's a lot lighter. And a touch here. And naturally with shadows, we get a darker and then lighter as there's more light, like this. And you might want to just go around your outlines a touch, just to define that shadow away. Great. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, job done. I think what I'm going to do now is just sign it. I'm not going to date it because I've absolutely no idea what date it is. And um, yeah, Bob's your uncle. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned a little something and I hope you were inspired to draw along yourself. If you did draw along, please, please, please share your results with us. We would love to see them. If you post it online, tag at wildlife drawing and at garden museum or you can also send it to us via email as i said we would love to see it and so for now um all that leaves me to do is uh, say thank you to the garden museum for this op opportunity and uh, to you all take care stay safe and see you on the other side thank you bye